Good morning everyone. Isa mapagpalaya at mapagpalang umaga sa bawat isa, lalo na sa ating mga kaguruan. To our dear teachers, friends, family members, colleagues, and to our dear chelleristas, good day. Welcome to this Abiva Teach webinars, Teach and Engage Amid the Community Hurdles. Sa araw na ito, I will be sharing with you some practical ways but empirically based mechanism on how we will be enhancing our use of videos for online instruction. I am Mr. Brando Palomar, commonly called as Sir E.R., a faculty member from the College of Teacher Development, Faculty of Science, Technology, and Mathematics of the Philippine Normal University. Today's online session aims to, first, describe the relevant roles of educators for online instruction. Second, to discuss the significance of presence in facilitating meaningful learning experiences for online instruction. And third, to provide mechanism on enhancing the use of videos for online instruction. This will be the sequence of our presentation. I'll be providing personal takeoffs and experiences in using technology, particularly videos in teaching. Second, the roles of instructors in online instruction. And the third will be the presence with practical tips Lastly, we will feature some computer applications or softwares on creating, developing, and editing videos. The background of my presentation started with an agreement for me to become a reactor in the webinar series of my dear friend, Professor Vic Marie Camacho. Her webinar series entitled Coffee Talk Online with Vic Marie caters personal teaching experiences and adventures of our dear science teachers during this pandemic crisis. Well, most of them are our dear friends and former students. So you may follow her YouTube account, Learn with Vic Marie. Then our friends from Abiva invited me to expound what I shared in the said webinar series, more particularly on the items about having our presence in our instructional videos. That is why I am hoping na makapagbigay po ako ng significant insights para sa ating paghahanda sa pagbubukas ng bagong school year. The Philippine Normal University and Abiva Publishing House Incorporated are committed in providing assistance to our dear teachers, especially during this pandemic crisis. Ibabahagi ko po sa inyo ay base sa aking personal experiences bilang isang public high school teacher sa paggamit ng video clips in teaching science. Gayun din ang aking teaching experiences sa PNU bilang isang critic mentor for our dear pre-service science teachers when they are developing and demonstrating their pedagogical plans and instructional materials. At ang aking experience also in training our dear in-service science teachers sa, sa mga aspeto ng pag-enhance ng kanila or ating instructional practices. Lastly, we will be anchoring these ideas that I am sharing with you from educational research studies, more particularly on integrating technology for improving instructional practices and environment. This is a pre-recorded video in order to address some technological constraints that we already experience when we are doing some trials about this presentation. Well, let us start with this simple activity. Alam ko lahat kayo ay familiar sa larong ito. So, What's the common theme among these four pictures? I guess those who are ahead of me and even my contemporaries have the same answer or idea about these pictures. They are all representing instructional videos used in, classroom or used in classrooms way back in 1990s and maybe being used until now. These are constell or continuing studies via television videos developed by FUSE, the Foundation for Upgrading the Standard of Education Incorporated. These videos are part of a telecourse that aims to enhance the instructional skills of science, mathematics, and English teachers through the effort of our former Senator Edgardo Ancara. Before we go into details, my first take off for this session is about the principle of instructor's willingness. Let me share with you the concept Miller and Williamson presented 
that in this kind of distance and online instruction or education, instructor subject and technical expertise are really important. But the, but the instructor's willingness, both psychologically and emotionally, is also significant in determining the success of this kind of educational platform. We teachers must acknowledge and accept the differences in nature, context, delivery, instructional practices between our previous experience and to our present scenario. We are all confronted to adjust and to evolve towards online education. Alam ko po at naiintindihan ko na meron tayong issue on technological affordances. Not all schools, families, and teachers have that kind of technological and financial capacity to fully support online instruction. But again, in this kind of pandemic crisis, it brings out not only our weaknesses and our constraints, but also the rich creativity and innovativeness among our dear teachers. The more challenging part right now is on how we can really make sure that our students will be learning that match from this online or even on modular approaches. Sabi nga po sa Dale's cone of experience, it suggests that students learn more if they are participating, designing, simulating, and even performing para sa kanila magkaroon ng realization na meaningful pala at relevant ang kanilang pagkatuto. The question now is, can we really do it using videos? Well, that question is all that question is also my question. I even imagine now myself how will I conduct it when I return to class this coming school year. But again, we have that kind of sense of urgency, being responsive, and the sense of re reflexivity that at the end, what we really wanted is to realize that kind of aspiration na nandun pa rin tayo kasama ng ating mga sudyante kahit sa videos lang. Sa ngayon po, mas importante siguro that everyone should be proactive. We have to maximize and intellectualize the use of technology for instruction. We use it primarily for inquiry, communication, construction, and expression. There are traces or evidences on how we use these sets of technology for instruction, as seen in television, offline and online, videos, in the internet, and even in social media. Just like this short video providing us information about virus in our own language. Ang kasalukuyang kaguluhan sa ating buhay ay dulot ng isang virus. Ano nga ba ang isang virus? Ang virus ay isang napakaliit na tila para siti kung pumapasok sa ating katawan. Ito ay may sukat na nasa scale ng 100 nanometers. Mas maliit pa ito sa isang cell at sa mga bakterya. Kasing liit nito ang buti ng asin na hahatiin sa 10,000 piraso. Well, many of us already tried doing our own technology-based instructional materials and video presentations in preparation po para sa ating pagbubukas sa bagong school year. Well, some of us, or some of them, and even I, okay, encounter difficulties in preparing these instructional videos. Yes, there are these difficulties and a lot. But at the end of the day, I may say, it's worthy. This is really part of the birth pains of migrating our instruction from the traditional classroom setting into an online classroom, okay? Just like what I'm doing right now. Again, there are a lot of bloopers behind this video recording, okay? There are several studies provided empirical um, results okay, showing the various aspects on how we use and how we will be enhancing the use of uh, these videos okay, and they exclude significant and positive um, effects on the different aspect also of the teaching environment. So 
I guess this is a very good opportunity for us to explore the effectiveness of these tools on online teaching. Then, as a reflective teacher, we may have this kind of understanding based on our experiences for us to further improve the quality and the delivery of this kind of um, online presentation of concepts, processes, and um, experiences okay, for the next cycle of instruction. Gayun din, we can also check this to verify the veracity of the results of the previous studies. Um, multimedia technology and videos in classroom were effective tools in the teacher education programs. That's why um, let me encourage you that we can uh, do step by step okay, in migrating these tools on our online instruction. Well, you may ask me why I am using videos in teaching and what kind of videos I am using. Initially, meron po akong dalawang reason why I use these kind of videos, like the console videos, especially when I am teaching physics concepts. Una po, there are some science concepts which are very abstract in nature. Kaya nga po, it is best for our students to visualize these concepts using videos. The second is somehow a sad reality because let's face it, there are still these educational settings with limited laboratory resources. Kaya nga po, um, para makapag-provide ng meaningful experiences sa ating mga bata and for them to really um, experience these different scientific processes and concepts, we tend to use uh, teaching demonstrations that are video recorded in order for them to have that kind of feeling how they will be doing and experiencing such kind of experiment for them to learn these activities. But aside from these videos developed for educational purposes, may mga pagkakataon din po na gumagamit ako ng cartoons tulad nito. I guess some of you are familiar with it. And it's a very good tool to show some concepts in science. Or even po, mga anime. Tulad nito. Magical impulses that carry messages from the brain to different parts of the body. Ang tanong ay bakit? Ginagamit ko ito para maintindihan ko ang language at prior knowledge ng aking mga bata or aking mga sudyante para mas lalo kong ma-explore kung paano natin pwede ma-relate yung kanilang mga natutunan sa ating klase. O kaya, sometimes I choose video clips of science film or science fi science fiction films para ma-explore ang pagkakaintindi ng lessons gayon din ang mga misconceptions ng bata tulad ng video clip na to Saan kaya ang mali? What seems to be wrong in this film? Or, may mga pagkakataon na mahirap mag-establish ng rapport at mag-inculcate ng values. Kaya may mga chances po na gumagamit tayo ng segments mula sa mga inspirational videos or commercials tulad nito. I think oh, this one is very inspiring. But at the end, let's wait and see. Everyone is in awe. At ako, naniniwala ko. At lagi ko nang emphasize sa ating mga sudyante that they can really 
shine. So aside from this, okay, um, ito po isa sa pinaka um, usual na ginagamit ko na film when I am training teachers para sa konteksto ng problem-based learning at paggamit ng authentic assessment. Ito ay mula or halaw sa film na Temple Grandin kung saan pinapakita ang kahalagahan ng paggamit ng videos upang ma-introduce ang concept ng problem-based na aming ginagawang basehan para may sagawa ang product development at ang output ay evidence ng pagkatuto ng ating mga sudyante. Let me share to you um, a four-minute video of Temple Grandin. So this is somehow a workshop classroom. Okay. Everybody watch very carefully because this one is all about optical illusions. So I guess this is a science class. And the video is really used to trigger students' ideas. But there's nothing wrong with the faces. It's those windows. What they're doing to your brain. Alright, here we go. Yeah. A small one and a tall. Let's see if we can even things out a bit. As you can see, Claire Gaines, who is playing Tampo Grandin. Okay. That is the question, isn't it? So the question is how it is done. Well, that's this week's assignment. And that serves as the problem. Giving the students now the time to explore and to learn it by themselves. Okay. Okay. Maybe from this clip we can structure more how we will be providing this kind of learning experience to our students by following a certain model of how we will be implementing problem-based learning which we can really embed in our instru instructional videos. But make it sure that we are also presenting the rubrics we are expecting for their outputs. So as you can see here, there are segments where Claire Danes, as Temple Grandin, is trying to figure it out by her, by, on herself. Okay? Giving her the liberty and to do it independently. Okay? using her understanding and the way she projects things especially but again it's not a one-shot kind of learning so this is a more of trial and error and giving her somehow frustrations but what's more important is that we trigger the students to learn outside the box outside the classroom and maybe that's the quest right now on how we will be really providing our students the way for them to uh, learn independently but with caution but with more guidance but with your presence even that you are both far away or in online setting so here one good example is consultation. So maybe during our online instruction, we can provide a certain platform where students can really consult with you at certain time because we also wanted to respect your privacy, our privacy. Ask for them to really go on to the next step. And here now is the clip where Temple Grandin was able to produce the output intended for the kind of problem the teacher has given her or them. But as you can see, see? the horses are the exact same size. So it's really about optical illusion and, and here is the rock. This is now the reason why it is like that. Temple, congratulations. So it's, it shows us um, the potential of this kind of learning atmosphere, of this kind of learning platform. So my encouragement is for us to really be more creative 
be more proactive for us to deliver this kind of online instruction. Nararapat din po na ating maintindihan ang iba't ibang mga roles na dapat nating gampanan in an online instruction. Ayon po sa pag-aaral, meron pong apat na dimensions ang ating mga roles bilang online instructor. Una ay ang pedagogical dimension. Bilang teacher, you are the content and the instructional expert how you will be delivering your online instruction. Kaya nga po, in some occasions, I am trying now to imagine and visualize how the classroom will be like that and what are the different um, key concepts that I have to include in a certain video and how should it be implemented in an online instruction format. The second dimension is the social perspective being as an online instructor. Somehow, it goes with our responsibility being the moderator and to provide social guidance for our students go on into online instruction. Later, may mga tips po ang ibibigay sa inyo on how we teachers may able to um, understand and realize these kind of rules that we have to consider as we go on into online instruction. Pangatlo po ay ang managerial function natin. Kung saan we try to be as the overseer and the manager of our course site. Somehow, this has your ability uh, on providing the appropriate links, providing the uploading and downloading of your instructional videos, and the way you will be arranging, layouting, and editing some of your instructional videos for online instruction. The last one is being the technical support. Okay? Uh, I do understand that not all of us are digitally uh, native teachers. Um, I myself consider as a digital migrant instructor, but um, this will be a good opportunity uh, also to check what are these teaching competencies that I have to demonstrate for online instruction, for me to identify my strengths, and for me to also recognize that I have this kind of limitation that eventually, and I am hoping that I'll be uh, enhancing and overcoming it so that I'll be more ready into this kind of uh, educational platform. So this is more um, somehow a difficult function because we have to understand the language of this kind of platform or instructional platform. We have also to be more knowledgeable on the different technological gadgets that we will be using. Um, for example, how we will be maximizing the use of our laptops the software embedded on it, how we can maximize and intellectualize the use of our phones, uh, more particularly um, in creating and in editing um, online video materials, and to explore other algorithms, technicalities. So uh, I know it's quite diff difficult, but um, later on we have some um, tips for you to guide as we go on in this new quest that really change um, dramatically our teaching uh, experiences in the coming days. So let's pause for a while and let us have this kind of thinking points. Yes. So my dear teachers kindly get one half diagonal wise paper. Yes. Opo, one half diagonal wise paper. Okay, so these are our thinking points. Question number one. Which of these roles for online instructors that you are more familiar or confident to demonstrate? And why? Mm -hmm. Question number two. Which of these roles you find difficult to perform? And why? I guess what's, what's more important right now is that we have to recognize our potentials as teachers 
and mm-hmm. we also have to accept that we have some limitations because in that sense we can make the best of those potentials that we have and we can now identify some strategies uh, for us to improve those difficult roles that we will be taking as we go on or as we go on into this kind of online instruction. Okay. Now, in online learning, generally, there are two types of interaction that we have to consider. The interaction of the content and the interpersonal interaction between teachers and students, despite the fact that we are not into the actual classroom setting. Um, how to realize it? The main part is about the context of humanizing. Because we all recognize that we are in this kind of technological platform where our physical presence is not really evident, but we can come up with a way or um, an idea to bridge in how you and your students may be interacting and how your presence may be felt into this kind of uh, video or instructional videos that we will be providing for online instruction. When you say humanizing, okay, uh, it pertains more of creating how close you are and how connected you are to your students. This kind of educational experience, there are three major forms of presence that we have to recognize. The first one is the cognitive presence. The second one is the teaching presence. And the last one is the social presence. So when they try to interact one another, there are some interlinking factors that we have to consider. Example, cognitive presence interacting with the teaching presence um, deals now with the selection of the content that we will be using in our videos. Now, teaching presence interacting with social presence, somehow we are trying to manage what kind of atmosphere that we will be providing to our students when they will be watching okay, our videos. And the third one, the third interaction is the interaction between cognitive presence and social presence, which somehow uh, addresses or points out to the supporting discourse that we will be using also so that the students may have that kind of feeling that, oh, okay, we are really in his class, despite the fact that we are just simply watching how, our, how you as our teacher is presenting the concept. So let's go back with our one half diagonal wise pad paper. So my question is, yes, meron po tayong assessment, okay? So why do you think it is necessary for us to establish your presence or our presence in our instructional videos for online instruction? These three forms of presence, the cognitive, teaching, and social presence, are part of the community of inquiry model presented by Garrison, Anderson, and Archer, where we can see that earlier, as mentioned, there are two forms of interaction. First is the interaction between the teacher and the content, okay, which establishes the cognitive presence, and the interaction between teacher and students, which will be established by the teaching and the social presence in order for us to provide meaningful learning experiences into this kind of online platform with our students. Now, why did I ask you that it is really essential for us to consider our presence to be part of our instructional videos that we'll be using for this kind of learning platform, okay? Because we, we wanted to reduce or totally eliminate a certain learning curve that our students may encounter when they are watching and using videos for their learning, okay? Because let's face the reality that there will be times that our students will be experiencing cognitive overloading, that with all the things we wanted them to learn, we put them into one video, um, I guess, 
that's one big thing that we have to consider which content uh, are necessary only to be included in this video how long should be the video okay and sometimes our students and even us may experience some technological constraints because there are some issues about compatibility maybe the kind of video that you are using using your laptop or your computer may require you different forms of compatibility of your software and then once the students for example will be using only their mobile phones um, compatibility is somehow an issue okay there may be some animations there may be some applications that when we use it in our videos may provide some difficulties also for our students which also eventually affects their learning causing for them to instead of being engaged into our instruction okay would cause for the downfall of their learning okay or sometimes uh, it may promote some misconceptions and i guess everybody already experienced this that for a whole day of having online meetings and online videos and online webinars something like this we may experience some physical tiredness yes nakakapagod din po okay ngayon ko lang naisip nga mahirap pala maging artista okay but um aside from that we also wanted to prevent our students to experience some a motivation that they will um not really motivated anymore of learning because uh, they will say that uh the, the the video that they will be uploading is something similar to what we are already experiencing or viewing in youtube or other kind of platforms or uh, the, the video are really boring, not that, that engaging. So that's why it is really necessary that we establish this kind of presence. Okay, the first presence that we're going to discuss is um, cognitive presence. Okay, uh, as, this, as described on our slide, okay, cognitive presence is the extent to which learners are able to construct and confirm meaning through the sustained reflection and discourse in a critical community of inquiry. So the critical community of inquiry here now is our uh, instruction and learning community in an online setting, okay? So this cognitive presence directly focus on how we are translating students' learning, okay, captured in our video instructions or in any other forms of instructional materials that we will be using uh, and employing in this kind of educational uh, setting, okay? Which also questions the quality of the content that we will be including in our videos. That's why we have to consider here the kind of lessons, okay, and the learning tasks na ilalagay natin kasama ng video, okay? So, medyo mabigat ang context na to. Kasi, we wanted that our students really learn the essential skills, and the essential concepts. Kaya nga po, I commend what DepEd already did on um, identifying the essential competencies that they will be in integrating into our actual classroom setting in this kind of uh, either mo online or modular uh, instructional delivery. Now, these are my tips in order for us to establish this cognitive presence. This is, as I mentioned earlier, this is staff. That's why I have two major tips. The first one is about creating or establishing your own team. Let's recognize it, that we have our own sets of expertise. Others may be very good in content, but others needed some enhancement on their instructional delivery. Others are very good in uh, the use of technology. Others are good in coming up with learning tasks, uh, learning activities, and they are very good with their communication skills. There are someone who are very good in um, coming up with uh, engaging tasks for the students to really understand the lessons that they will be learning. So the first tip that I am sharing with you anchors from our practices, particularly on lesson study, that uh, the more we are, the more we collaborate with one another, it somehow gives us an assurance that there is really quality 
in terms of the content and the delivery of our uh, lessons. Okay. In, in, in this slide, I use uh, Squad 7. I, I guess everybody or some of you knew who are the members of Squad 7. We have uh, their mentor, Kakashi Hatake. And we have Sasuke Uchiha, Naruto Uzumaki, and Sakura Haruno. Okay. So later on, you, you will realize why I use them. So um, each member of the team have their own respective has their own respective um, roles to consider. Okay, as we develop our own ins vid instructional videos, uh, coming up with a theme is something essential. Just like I did right now, I know I am not really uh, good in technology. That's why I asked the help of Zoe to uh, capture this presentation and edit both video and audio. And at the same time, uh, help me also to explore different uh, online applications that we can use for video creation and video editing, which we will also um, present later. Okay. So in this example, uh, we divide the tasks by taking the, the, this kind of roles. One will be focusing on content, developing the script, developing the what are the main ideas that kailangan na kailangan natin ma ma present sa bata at paano natin to pwede ma deliver on such a manner that it is easy for them to understand uh, the the whole scenario. Okay. The second one is uh, the teacher demonstrator, the one who will be the face of our video, because um, uh, some of us may be very shy to be in front of the video. Some of us are not that really telegenic or maybe psychogenic or maybe talikogenic. Okay? The one when you try to, you have a very good visual of yourself when you are uh, facing backwards. Okay? Um, so, or even who, who has that kind of good voice, a modulation, because voice is also necessary when we are um, trying to point out and emphasize something that the students has to learn. Iba ginagawa na natin sa classroom that we modulate or we try to come up with emphasizing these things that they have to learn. Okay. The second one is the third the third role is more of the video editing and animation. Just to make sure that the students will be engaged with you until the end of your video presentation. Okay. Kaya nga, I am hoping that you are still with me right now. Okay. And the last will be more on uh, the support that the students will be using when they will be watching our videos at the same time doing learning tasks uh, in a sense that you are, uh, how do we describe this? You are making sure that there is a translation or a transfer of knowledge from the video that they watch to the actual learning task that they will be doing. Kaya meron na kung dito ginawa na one will be for content developer and evaluator. The other one is the teacher demonstrator. The third person will be the video editor or animator. And the fourth one will be the learning assessment and assessment task developer. Okay. Why need this team? Um, because as I mentioned earlier, we have to be proactive and we have to accept the idea that we have to gear towards this kind of uh, learning platform, learning and teaching platform, but it's a reality that we have also to consider that there are things that it is something that uh, limits us to really maximize and to get the full potential of video instruction. Okay. Now, as we go together in developing this, there are a series of reflections and feedback that we have to observe. Because what, what we are after is that we must produce a quality, uh, a good quality of instructional video for our students. Um, because we can, or maybe, maka experience tayo ng mga technical difficulties. Okay. O kaya, baka pag translate natin ito, it may cause for the students to have misconceptions. Okay. Um, Reviewing the video and providing feedback allows 
uh, the team to come up with ways to improve. Okay, this is somehow a good way for us to practice being as a reflective practitioner. Kasi alam ko po nanin, at naniniwala ko na bawat isa sa atin merong expertise at bawat isa sa atin meron tayong mga um, proven and tested na mga pamamaraan kung paano magturo. At baka pag in-embed natin, in natin ito sa mga videos natin, uh, baka hindi siya akma. O kaya baka mas akma pa ganito. So, establishing your team and listening to the feedback somehow establishes the kind of cognitive presence na nandyan sa ating mga video. The second presence na ating i-discuss ay ang teaching presence. Okay, according again to our slide, as anchored or lifted from the article, okay, it's more of the design, facilitation, and direction of cognitive and social processes for the purpose na we will be realizing the personal, meaningful, and educational, worthwhile learning outcomes. So it touches more of the online pedagogical approaches which are suited in this kind of platform. Okay? And also describe the flow of instruction. Now, parang ganito po yun eh. Sabi sa PCK, um, there are different teaching methods that are subject specific and content specific. Meaning to say, you can really use this kind of pedagogy for this particular discipline and you can also use this specific pedagogy into a particular concept. Um, parang ganito po. We can use, for example, uh, a 30 second video clip. Uh, there are studies in language that uh, in microblogging, they use a 30-second video clip to, t to, to entice students to think and for them to come up with uh, a one to two paragraph of what they understand based on the 30-second video clip. That may be appropriate for language, but somehow it not be appropriate for math and science because there are some items that are necessary to be highlighted okay, or to be emphasized more so that, for example, when you are uh, coming up with mathematical discussion and uh, elaboration of your uh, solution, baka may makaligtaan tayong proseso na kung saan yung bata may get confused more. So the first step is for us to adapt uh, a certain model of instruction. Okay, um, I may uh, encourage you to use the five E's of the learning cycle or seven E's just to establish the flow of instruction. So, um, I have here a table. Okay, for example, the five E's. Okay, ano yung dapat mong ilagay sa engage? Anong video clip? Anong activity ang i-embed mo sa video mo for that? At anong mga kailangan mo para ma-establish yung activity na ilalagay mo na nasa engage part ng iyong um, instructional video until the part that you will be having your evaluation well it may be an objective type of evaluation or a subjective form of evaluation but the, 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 the more important is that the students may able to realize and feel na kahit nanonood lang sila sa video mo ay nasa classroom sila kasama ka okay so, that's it. Kasi parang for most of our students, they are used na these are, they, we have this kind of structures. But again, creativity, uh, I, I, I don't want you guys to limit your creativity by simply following this uh, model of instruction. What I am encouraging you guys is that maybe initially, um, there is such kind of structure for you to be more familiar on how you will be delivering your instruction. So, tulad nito, if you have this kind of instructional flow, okay, from engage to evaluation, then it is somehow easier for you to come up with your slides or particular episodes of your videos where you can also provide um, an appropriate 
script okay that you will be following and transitions okay that will guide the students that we are going from one phase of the learning to another phase of learning okay kaya nga rin importante that uh, in your video you must come up with outline of expectations just like in in this screenshot that i had this is part of um, the webinar series that I'm mentioning with you by my good friend, okay? So, she edited her video by and included, including um, portions, okay, of the whole video so that uh, somebody who will be watching her video are guided and giving them the, the idea of what is expected to be shown in that video. Yun yung yun ang gusto natin makita na merong structure yung yung video okay para maro, magkaroon talaga ng teaching presence ma-identify mo kung ano-ano yung mga bagay na kailangan na gagawin sa yung video at particular segment okay so that eventually you may include appropriate pedagogy Maybe at this part, after the pictures that I have shown with you, kailangan ko magkaroon ng demonstration para may pakita, for example, kung paano yung uh, movement ng air sa isang glass bottle. Okay? Or ano yung mga pepeding gamitin na materials para mapakita, kunyari, ang concept na... Uh, para mapakita yung concept ng yung gustong ituro. For example... Uh, Let's state the case sa arts. Paano natin i-differentiate yung konteksto ng um, mga art during this uh, period as compared to this period? So, anong dapat nating uh, materials ang ilalagay or ilalagay sa loob ng videos natin? Okay? O sabihin na natin, kailangan ni teacher sa chem kailangan ni chemistry teacher na may pakita ng reaction. So sa anong parte dapat niya ilagay iyon at anong mga materials ang kailangan para sa kanyang demonstration ng chemical reactions. Okay? So ganun din si teacher sa math. Kung paano niya magbibigay ng isang example at explain kung paano i-solve to at kung paano at saan niya kailangan ibigay yung pagkakataon na parang ang bata naman ay nakikipag uh, interact sa kanya kung paano masolve ang isang problem na kasama pa siya bago mo bibigyan ng pagkakataon na they will be doing it all alone at magkakaroon ng panibagong part where feedback from students are also considered okay so um, tip number one is to adapt a model of instruction tip number two is to provide outline of expectations bakit? in literature for example as mentioned here Videos are highly uh, uh, considered as the ano nga sabi dito sa paper na yun? Uh, videos are the most acceptable okay uh, instructional material where we can provide uh, scaffolding learning experiences for our students because they can view your videos on several times. Kung hindi naging malinaw sa kanya ang unang panonood ng iyong video, then they can go back at a certain time segment where you will be elaborating the said concept as for them uh, to realize what or how they will be thinking it and transferring that kind of information as a form of new knowledge. Uh, uh, on that particular on that particular concept the next tip okay, is to localize and contextualize because it is more authentic and it is more humanized okay just as mentioned by the paper of simons et al okay contextualizing or localizing is somehow helpful in order for the students to see the relevance of your video tulad nitong video clip na to na pinakita natin earlier. Okay? Kasi, um, una, this video is using our own language. So, 
ang target audience nito mas malawa. Pangalawa, they use this kind of uh, animation because it's more appealing to the car to the target audience in or intended audience. Pangalawa, pangatlo is that it's not only localizing but it's more of humanizing the concepts by providing certain uh, analogy by providing certain graphics to support the the audio file okay so the, the fourth tip is about the length of your video i use the term short but sweet tulad dito sa mga nasa theater they have this kind of short and sweet place that somehow gives the audience that kind of engross uh, in, or engage feeling to the said um, theater play. Okay? So, ang tanong mo ngayon sa akin ay, Sir, gano'n po ba talaga katagal ang isang video para uh, ma-deliver namin yung concept? Actually, it depends on your uh, intention kung hanggang saan yung dapat na matutunan ng bata. Pero ang suggestion ko po ay you make it shorter okay, and you can come up with series of videos. Okay? In literature, sabi nga po, it may start from 30 seconds and okay, in order to avoid learning curve is that we can have as much as or less than to 10 minutes. So, ngayon sa tingin ko, lahat tayo bored na sa sinasabi ko or lahat tayo ngayon ay um, mayroong physical tiredness while we are having this kind of webinar episode. I myself, I am somehow exhausted right now uh, for talking for almost 20 or 30 minutes. But again, uh, let's go on and push through for this web webinar episode. And I hope that this tip may serve as a good reminder for us to really check if until what length of videos where our students are really engaged with us. Maybe a five-minute video is enough. Then they will be doing their uh, instructional activities that you also prepared together with that uh, instructional video. Okay? O baka pwede nga lang three minutes, tapos na lahat. Nandun na yung concept. Tapos, meron nga lang supporting na mga activities na dapat nila magawa. It's either on the phone, or it's a written text, or yun yung nandun sa module nila. Okay? So, with these tips, I am hoping that the teaching presence will be part in our instructional video. So that the students may able to feel that, okay, we are still in the actual classroom setting. Because, we follow a certain structural form or flow of instruction, then you provide them what are the things that it is expected them to learn at the beginning. Um, we also have to recognize what are our expectations uh, on the outputs of our students. It must be very clear to them what are the things that we are expecting them to produce out of those learning tasks that are also embedded inside our instructional videos. Then, let me emphasize again that it should have this kind of localization and contextualization. Okay? Uh, kailangan din natin gamitin yung language natin because uh, there are studies also suggesting that uh, they learn more if they, uh, if we're using, I mean to say, uh, both English and Filipino uh, as our medium of instruction. Okay? Um, but maybe it's a case-to-case -case basis, okay? Um, contextualizing is, is essential also in our instructional videos because as we try to anchor this uh, deep, okay, to the well-known or established principle in teaching and learning about uh, constructivism that students learn more by building their new knowledge from their previous experiences. So, if we're going to provide uh, segments on our instructional videos, kung saan they can say that, oh, it's something na we experienced before. Uh, in that sense, it gave them the 
assurance that the video that you are going to present with them are somehow relevant for their learning okay and as i mentioned we can also take advantage of what is happening right now maybe for english teachers they may be coming up with an instructional video and the output is the understanding of students uh, with what is happening uh, during the pandemic crisis for example math can we can also use the concepts or the information that we get um, with regards to the number of cases and the number of casualties and even those recovery cases uh, in this pandemic crisis as um, a material that we can integrate concepts in mathematics or even in science or for example in the arts uh, what are the possible uh, materials and outputs that the students can deliver and produce out of this pandemic crisis so it's a matter of contextualizing and it's a matter of localizing uh, the content of our instructional videos and as mentioned earlier uh, I, I am really advocating on the idea that the instructional videos must be short okay but sweet okay um, short because we know that um, in psychology there are times that we remember things at a shorter time frame okay and there must be this kind of ability for students to really store those things that they learn from for example from this video and place them into our long-term memory so it's a matter of prioritizing also or uh, identifying which are the essentials and uh, what are those things na kailangan nandun sa video natin at dapat na capture tama uh, and good quality Okay, so these are just the tips that I have in mind and based on also on the experience and on the um, readings that I had regarding integration of technology, particularly on the use of videos okay, in teaching, now also in online instruction. The last presence that I'm going to emphasize is about the social presence. Uh, pasosyal. Okay, mukhang tama na ako ang nandito kasi... Um, sa mga chileristas dyan, I guess uh, in some cases, a social climbing activity is also important. Okay, So the social presence according to the literature is the ability for the participants of, that, of this kind of community of inquiry to project themselves socially and emotionally as a real people in this kind of medium of instruction. Which is, um, for me, it's quite difficult. The idea, that, the idea is that we cannot really be into a face-to-face -face instruction, but we have to come up with strategies where you, as teachers, and the students will really feel that there is this kind of student-teacher interactions. Sa aking pag-aaral po, sa aking, I mean to say, we, I, if I'm going to relate it to my to my study right now, I it is important that we have to recognize these kind of classroom interactions because student teacher interactions are evidences on how teachers directly influence students' motivation, engagement, understanding, and even their learning. I mean to say much more of their learning. That's why it is also necessary for us to highlight this social presence, the need of this social presence, and to establish this kind of teacher-student interaction, okay? And the next item of this social presence is to provide them the atmosphere that they are still inside their classroom, despite the fact that uh, they are at home watching you and doing the tasks embedded in your instructional videos, okay? Now, these are the things na aking ginagawa at aking nabasa at na-experience sa paggamit ng videos at gagamitin din natin sa pagtuturo in this kind of online instruction. Okay, the first one is really to have that presence. Okay, dapat may personal touch. So, meaning to say, um you are giving them a portion of yourself 
in your instructional video so that they may feel that, oh, si sir at si ma'am ay nandun sa video talaga. Okay? That's why there are videos that they only use the audio, okay? Where they really use their own voice, that's good. Others really uh, are prepping app and doing this kind of instructional video where showing their faces and somehow their gestures are, in there, are also there, their actions, then that's also good because you are establishing your teacher presence, okay? But that's only your teacher presence. In, in one literature, for example, more particularly of the one by Jonas and Bradley, humor is also important in uh, coming up with this video, the G, okay? It's learning through videos, okay? So, uh, that's why in this example, in this slide, you can see that uh, I placed there my, my face and the most common word that usually comes out of my mouth is chill, okay? And I guess these things are really important because it provides our students and those who are watching the video that, okay, there's that kind of personal touch of ER in this video which is also necessary that you have to establish when you are doing your own instructional videos. So parang tulad ng sinabi ko po sa aking kaibigan na si Professor Vic Maria Camacho na baka dapat lagi meron kang okay minus 50 dun sa mga videos mo. Kasi dun siya kilala. Okay. O kaya yung idea na uh, uh, how you transition from one from one concept to another transition of concepts. Sa tingin ko yung mga kaibigan ko, kilala nyo na kung sino sinasabi ko. Okay? Or yung low tone mo ng bosses mo, pero pag ine-emphasize mo yung concept, biglang mag increase yung voice, yung, yung, yung volume ng voice mo, those are part of establishing your personal presence. Pero hindi lang ikaw. Dapat pati estudyante, nag interact That's why I came up with this, uh, another tip. The tip is for us to insert prompts or guide or scaffolding questions, uh, additional tasks, which is embedded on your instructional videos, and even yun sinasabi nga po ni Sir Ryan Sangan na thinking points. Okay, why? Why these are necessary? Because these establish somehow a level of interactivity in our videos. Okay, and it supports instructional scaffolding. So, hindi lang yung bata nakikinig, purely listening and watching you. They must be engaged in learning by doing the tasks embedded in your video. Earlier, when I say about, or when, I, when we presented the context of Dale's Cones of Experience, ang challenge sa atin ay mag-participate ang bata, mag-design uh, mag at mag-perform ang bata. That's why I am recommending that in our videos, there should be a cat where you will be providing them questions or tasks that they will be answering which are anchored from the earlier segments of your videos. Para ang dating, ah, si sir at ako ay, or I mean to say, si teacher at a student ay nandun mismo virtually sa video. Kasi you can simply point out, uh, okay, uh, Juan de la Cruz, what's the answer for this question? Or Maria, what's the answer for question number two? I mean to say, what's the, uh, yeah, the, what's the que answer to question number two? So you can also place them in, in, in your uh, videos. Or sabi mo na, okay, lahat siya anang mga magaganda kong sudyante, pakisagutan ang question number one. Lahat naman ng mga bibo kong sudyante at idol si Jollibee ay isagutan ang, ang question number two. Okay? So, just for them to have the feeling that they are involved. Yun yung sinasabi na, oh, okay, mga, mga, mga sudyante ko, mga pa-involve kayo. Dapat na doon. They, they must have that kind of connection. So, how do we do it? The, this is, I guess, the simplest way. You can do this not only on videos. You can do it in your modules. 
okay, that there are sections that they have to answer. Uh, in, in even in Google Docs, you can you can have a segment there that they can uh, they will be answering, and you can simply specifying their names on that documents that they are the one na kailangan mag-respond doon okay at sumagot doon sa mga questions na yon okay is this is just a, a way of exploring the possibilities how we can more uh, attract our students to be engaged okay sa totoo lang ngayon sa tingin ko lahat ito, ano na naboboard na kayo sa sinasabi ko but these are just some friendly tips na yung iba ginagawa na very good on that yung iba gagawin pa lang very good on that yung iba gagawin pa lang that's also good so why these prompts guide and scaffolding questions or tasks or these thinking points are important as I mentioned these are features for the interactivity of your instructional videos but at the same time, we have to recognize that these parts are the instructional scaffolding para mas ma-reinforce ang learning ng bata gamit ang instructional videos natin. Sabi nga po ni Redish, we have to provide varied but repetitive learning experiences to our students. That's why there should be some variation okay, on our instructional videos. Why do we need these things because sabi nga pa dito sa paper ni Dylan Liu and Wilson okay uh, it promotes uh, self regulation skills of our students so that they may able to um, transition also from the actual uh, tra uh, actual or traditional learning uh, environment into a new learning experiences okay so we were able to define and identify some tips for us to establish our cognitive presence, our teaching presence, and our social presence. So, um, last na ito, swear, promise. Pero alam ko, masakit ito sa banks. Okay? I have three more questions for you, our dear teachers, our dear chileristas. So, the first question is, what are the essential items you have to consider in establishing your cognitive presence in your instruction of videos? The second question is, uh, what kind of instructional and pedagogical approaches you will be integrating in your videos? And the last question will be this, how will you enhance your social presence in your instructional videos. Maybe I provided you some basic and you have your own experience and you have your own um, means of establishing these presence for your instructional videos. But more or less, maybe some of you will be asking, Sir, paano ba kami gagawa ng aming video? Um, hindi naman kami ganun ka techie. We're not technologically savvy uh, we have limited resources yes that's a problem pero tulad ng sinabi ko kanina uh, establish your group maybe somebody in your group have that kind of technological advantage and skills uh, but let's go back in reality um, your phones uh, can be a good uh, means for recording this form of instructional video and even your laptops or your computers they have built in multi-major presentations that you may be using or we can be we can use uh, as we go on with this development and design of our own um, instructional videos let me share with you three um, practical computer softwares and, or applications uh, that can be of good help as we go on or start developing our instructional videos. Okay, The first one is, the very, is very basic and I guess everybody has their own uh, built-in uh, PowerPoint or multimedia presentation software. Okay, If that would be the technical term. Okay, So in this slide, I place the the link already 
Uh, this link helps us to identify the different steps that we are going to follow in order na makagawa tayo ng video out of the PowerPoints that we have already. Okay. Alam ko, we have a collections of multi-major presentations. But, um, syempre, kung, kung PPT siya, uh, students will be more of uh, clicking or having that kind of mechanism, uh, unlike, which is somehow not that really helpful, if I may say. But we can enhance our multimedia or PowerPoints by converting it into a video form, okay? In this link that I have provided, uh, it will help us to establish and create our, our videos by simply upgrading our multimedia presentations. So in this slide, you can see that there's a red ring, okay? Because uh, if you can see in your, I guess that's, I'll try to check it first. No, it's on your insert tab of your uh, PowerPoint system that there is that video, audio, and screen recording on, this is left, this is right, okay, on your left part because I am thinking on how it is projected on your screen. So you can maximize these um, features by uh, as how I did it with my presentation right now with you guys. So I use the video part here to embed some videos on my presentation or I can simply just use my, my voice to come up with a video of, uh, for example, explaining concepts of um, the science lessons that I'll be, you, uh, that I'll be delivering through PowerPoints, but enhancing it in a form of videos, or do the screen recording. Okay, that's the. I guess that's the very basic that we can uh, use if we are not that really technologically uh, savvy. Okay, so ang ano ko nga kanina, Let's be more proactive. Uh, let's try to uh, maximize what we have right now. Okay, but if we have some time, and since we are forming our group. Maybe we can establish uh, a more detailed uh, manner of creating, editing, uh, developing and editing our videos. The next item that I may share with you is this free uh, um, uh, this is free okay, and has a lot of features for video editing. So the open shot video editor is something also a promising. A tool for us to create and to edit our videos. Now, uh, I may share the link also or you may sh simply um, search it on the net. They also have um, a lot of tutorials on how we can maximize our use on this uh, app so that uh, we may able to really come up with our uh, instructional videos. Okay. Um, some of the features that they have is that the common thing that we can trim and slice our videos. They have animations, video effects, uh, text and time effects, okay? And even they have roughly around 70 language or sets of language included in their, in their application, okay? And they have a very friendly or, or simple interface where you will, there's a certain section for your video files, for your presentation files, for your audio files, and the likes. That when, once na gagamitin mo to to, uh, to layer in and to sync your audio and your video, uh, somehow the, the interface yung makikita mo sa screen mo are very friendly and helpful. Okay. And the last one is also a, a freeware, okay? And they have uh, continuously evolved, okay? The active presenter, okay? You can use this and explore the different features that they have. They have a responsive design, flexbacks, text animations if you wanted, and um, they have uh, multiple timelines that you can use. Uh, there's a certain 
um, interactivity feature and you can also have do your quizzes. Sabi natin kanina, you have the flow, instructional flow. At the end, there must be this evaluation, okay? And we wanted the students to check whether they really understood it, but it's in a more interactive manner. So, for example, you have multiple choice, and if their answer is B, but the, the real answer is, for example, is C, once they submit it, uh, there's a corresponding remark that, okay, uh, that's the wrong answer. So they can go back and check and somehow uh, verify kung ano ba yung tama sagot. Okay, um, we, uh, there are tutorials that is also available if you will be using this. There was this one activity that um, you have to match the word and the, the picture and then when you try to submit it, it will provide you a corresponding item that, okay, five out of uh, seven pictures are correct. So in that sense, uh, there's a certain level of interactivity uh, and presence, okay? And the students may able to do it again in order for them to really come up with better understanding of what they have learned, I mean to say, a better way of checking of what they have learned from the video, okay? So some of the features here also have, uh, they have same as the previous one, they have a very uh, friendly interface. There are audio and video recording system. In, you have your audio and video editing system here, report tracks and export form systems, and the green screen effect. Okay, so um, the key here is also explore the different possibilities of um, going into this kind of online instruction and emphasizing the use of videos for in order to establish uh, your presence, our presence teachers as we deliver this kind of instruction. Actually, we have also to recognize that because of this pandemic crisis that we experience, instructional practices are transformed. That's a reality right now that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have to accept the fact that there's a big difference, but this pandemic crisis also gave us the opportunity to enhance our other instructional uh, competencies and refine, I use the term refine, our instructional deliveries. Um, we have to recognize that there is this kind of uh, technological revolution uh, that is happening in our daily lives, which also directly influences our education system. Hindi natin may kakaila na um, darating ang panahon that uh, there will be this kind of platform or this kind of um, emergence of technological uh, integration, uh, maybe a full or a partial in te technological uh, integration uh, as for us teachers to really deliver uh, what is intended for us to do uh, aligned to the aspirations of our curriculum. Kaya nga parang, uh, in, in a personal note, this is something more exciting part, I guess. Challenging, but also exciting. Uh, tulad nga ng sinabi ni, ni Reddish, na ang pagtuturo daw ay inspirational and frustrating. Frustrating kasi, alam natin, in reality, there are cases that we already provide everything that uh, and with our full power for the students to learn but there are cases that they only learn little or that match okay but it is inspiring also that there are the students who really take advantage every time that they are inside our class uh, maybe this, this this kind of instruction is uh, is another problem another hindrance um, but for me it's more of uh, taking this into uh, a different perspective emphasizing and capitalizing more on the idea that this will be a new way for us to explore things
deep no okay we can continue okay okay to explore more things to explore our other our other abilities and to enhance more what we can give for our students um, I believe in everybody's capacity and I do recognize that though we have this kind of limitations right now but uh, we are really innovative enough and we can find ways to really uh, push through with this kind of aspiration na ma, ma reach natin ang ating mga sudyante, ma matuto sila mula sa ating ginagawa. Whether it is in this kind of online instruction or in a form of modular uh, approach, what's more important is that we are not limiting ourselves to be part of this uh, reform. Okay, and with that, I just hope some of the tips are helpful enough with you and uh, um, this will also serve as a good reminder that we can do more from what we have. Okay, and um, thank you very much uh, to Abiva for giving me this time to share uh, my, my, my simple understanding and my experiences in doing it and maybe in the next or in the next succeeding times na magkikita tayo at magkakaroon ng pagkakataon na tayo magtalakayan uh, there will be more rewarding and rich stories how we transition from our uh, this kind of instruction to a new form of instruction uh, I am excited more to hear and to listen to how we transition uh, what are the difficulties that we encountered and how we overcome these difficulties so again this is our er thank you for listening to our dear chileristas there and our dear teachers keep safe okay and god bless us all chill